the ecosystems I study are expected to um, become extinct, ecologically extinct, within about 50 years. So I'm very concerned about sustainability, energy use, uh, how all rivers run to the sea, and our actions affect everything around us. So, um, so I'm very interested in the larger um, picture of looking at sustainability efforts. Uh, and what I'd like to tell you about today was a student report in one of our classes. We have a minor program in sustainability at the university, <coughs> and the students do projects. And usually they're theor theoretical projects in which they dream up ideas of what could be. Uh, and this was an idea they came up with in the class. They said they were sitting around talking about what they could do for transportation project, and they, they were aware of um, Wales, Rails with Trails, which is a national program, and they put together um, a report about it. So, so I'm kind of just the messenger here for this fab fabulous student report. These students have mostly graduated. Uh, some of them were honor students, and they've won awards and things, so they're really an excellent group. Uh, so I'm just going to give you uh, information about what they, what they determine in terms of what's possible in our area. Um, so the Rails to Trails is similar to the Rails to Trails concept. And the Rails to Trails is a very, a fairly old program that's been around quite a while, in which abandoned railways, and there are quite a few of them in the U.S., have actually been converted to uh, walking and biking trails. So there's an already existing corridor created by a railway, and it's converted into a wonderful uh, uh, pedestrian and, and biking trail. Uh, but the rails with, with trails concept is where you actually work with an active rail line, and you install a walking and biking trail along that corridor, using that corridor, while the trains are still actively using uh, the railway. Uh, and there are a wide range of designs. There's a lot of different designs in terms of setback and safety and, and amenities along the trails. Um, the rails with trails, even though it's younger than the rails to trails, has been around since about the 90s. Uh, and it's growing in popularity across the country. There are more and more of them being developed. And there are actually already 161 rails with trails right along railway lines uh, in 41 states. Okay? So it's, it's really a growing program. Uh, and here's a map of all of the rails with trails across the United States. And what you might notice is that they are in most of the states around the country. Uh, there a large proportion of them are in the Northeast, quite a few out West. Uh, we even have some in Alaska. Uh, and there, there's a couple that I didn't actually didn't know about. They're right here nearby in Georgia. You come to go visit those and see what they look like. Uh, but we don't have any in Alabama. And we are one of only, uh, I think it's 11 states that don't have one. So if Auburn, Opelika were, were, were able to implement and rails with trails in our area, it would be a real feather in the cap for Auburn because we'd be the first in the state. Okay. So Auburn, Auburn doesn't have one. Uh, the students, when they did their report, they came up with some statistics and they got them from a wonderful website uh, that is run by the Rails to Trails organization. It's a report on Rails to Trails. Easy to find on the internet. And um, what they found is that most, in most cases, when people try to create a trail along railways, uh, it's usually um, acquired, the trail area, through a lease or an agreement with the, rail, with the railroad itself. So it's using the area without actually buying it. Sometimes there's a simple purchase of the area. Sometimes there's actually a trail agency, like maybe National Park Service or a state park system or a recreation uh, system that actually owns it already. Uh, but usually there's a, an agreement with the railway to use the corridor for a trail. And in most cases, they're actually along regular freight lines, like what we have here. So, you know, what we have here in Auburn is similar to where most of these things are built. There are freight trains going by. Uh, some of them are built along, you know, Amtrak, only tracks or passenger trains, but mostly it's along freight lines, what we have locally. Uh, they did, they collected some interesting statistics about the attitudes of the railway lines uh, to these kinds of trails. So before the trail is implemented, the, the railroads, more than half of them were agreeable to the idea of it. Uh, some of them were opposed. But after the, the uh, trail was actually implemented and going along the railway, the majority of them were either supportive or neutral. Okay? And only 6% of them were actually concerned or still worried about the issues of having a trail with the railway. So there really was a uh, majority um, of support after they were uh, implemented. 
So this is what they can look like. This is an example of an active rail line with, uh, in this case, fencing between the railway and the trail. There's some lighting here. This is a, a good example of a, a parking area and access right onto the trailway. So this could be like sort of the trailhead area with parking. You can imagine what this might look like in Auburn. Uh, here's an example of a railway area with a trail in a forested area. So most of our railway along town has a forested area along it. And this is conceivably what it could look like. Again, if there's a, a fence here separating the two activities. Uh, and I wanted to briefly talk about some of the benefits. There's a whole array of benefits that have been uh, reaped by the, by the communities that implement these systems. Okay? And the idea is to have one going from Auburn, from the old train station, six miles or so down to, right into downtown Opelika. Okay, that's, and I'll show you a map in a minute about it. Okay, and the students came up with this idea of where, where, where it could go. So one great benefit is that it enhances the ability of people in town to use non-motorized transportation. So you could walk and bike to get along this corridor. And it could reduce some of the congestion along Opelika Road, which goes right along the railway area. People can access stores and businesses by walking or by biking along that corridor. Um, it obviously enhances fitness, uh, fitness and health opportunities, options in town for a really long exercise path. Um, it would also connect the two cities more. So right now we have these high-speed roads between the cities, but this would be a wonderful um, enhancement of connectivity uh, for other activities besides driving a car between the towns. And it would also create a tourist attraction. Auburn Opelika could advertise this as an amenity in our area that actually uh, could, could attract tourists to the area, bike, especially biking tourists. Um, it also has been shown to enhance economic development in the area. So it actually increases uh, access of the businesses along the trail. You can imagine all along the Opelika Road uh, how people could access those businesses more easily if they didn't have to, if people, especially people who don't have access to a car or who prefer to use uh, bicycles. Um, and it actually has been shown to increase real estate values. So homes that are along the trail list the trail as an amenity because if you have this trail right in your backyard or close to your house, it's actually an amenity for when you sell the house. It's an enhanced feature of, of living near the railroad track. Instead of the, uh, the negatives that we sometimes feel now, I live really close to the railroad track. And it's pretty loud sometimes, so it's mostly thought of as sort of a negative, but this would enhance uh, the value of living there. There is a revitalization plan for Opelika Road, and I'm not very familiar with it, but I know that there are plans for revitalizing that strip in Auburn along Opelika Road, and this would be, um, this would just simply uh, be very synergistic with it, and it would um, sort of dovetail nicely with that enhancement pro uh, program. Uh, and also, uh, we have a beautiful train depot in downtown Auburn, and it used to be the stop where the football teams would come in when they were coming to play Auburn. Uh, and they would, uh, there's some great stories of, I don't know, some of you are probably more familiar than me, but. They would, they I, would grease the tracks. Uh, they greased the tracks, Fan fantastic. I think it was Georgia. Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech would come in, they'd grease the tracks, and they'd just slide fact, right past Auburn. The picture Auburn. on the Auburn <laughs> alumni yeah. this month is in 1955 when, um, the, they beat Georgia Tech and they were coming back and they greased the track. Yeah, it's fantastic. And you know, it's a beautiful little train station. It pains me to go by there every time I go by and see it closed. Well, the city of Auburn owns that now. You know that, don't you? And uh, you know, if you could have some historic um, uh, information and signage about these events that happened at the train station. I mean, you know, my dream would be eventually it would really be a passenger station and we'd actually use it again for passenger rail. But in the meantime, it could be a wonderful, in addition to the historic area, you know, connecting with walking and biking, and there's already parking there. You could have some even sort of park atmosphere there for people, so it would be great for connecting with historic sort of preservation of our train depot. And then along the corridor, you know, walk, pedestrians and bikers who want to go along the Opelika Road corridor, it's very risky. You know, there is a uh, you know, sidewalk in some areas, but it's, it's not very pleasant either to go along that, that very busy road. So this would just enhance safety for people trying to go along the corridor in a nice wooded area along the tracks instead of along the, the um, automobile road. And then also, um, we'll look at the map in a minute, but there's actually, I didn't even know this, there's a nice little wooded area between Auburn and Opelika, and there's a creek crossing there where the railroad goes over a creek, and there's, there's wildlife habitat there. It would enhance the ability of people to connect with that wildlife area and you know, contribute to, I think, its conservation. Okay, 
these are lots of benefits. And then once you have a corridor like that, that actually has a trail, a nice trail along it, then you can think of connectors. And you can start connecting that, that trail with other bikeways and other pedestrian corridors in town. So you can just imagine how it would, you could have trails branching out or um, pedestrian and, and bike lane areas branching out from that trail to the city. And so these are lots of benefits. And these are common to a lot of the rails with trails all across the country, these kind of benefits. So here's the map that the students put together. This is the, uh, the uh, potential idea for the trail. It could, uh, one end of it would be where College Street meets the railroad. So here's the, the university. And let's see, major road here is Dean Road. I think we're somewhere in, let's see, we're right in here. This is the major crossing right here. When you come down here, this is university, turns into Chef Jordan. So here's, the, here's the airport. And then it would go along here. Uh, let's see, there's a creek. This is a nice wooded area here, we cross the creek. And then there are minor roads, and then it would end up down here in downtown uh, Ogallaga. So it's about 6.6 .6 miles between the two cities. And this would be sort of a core area uh, for a trail going along, connecting really the downtown area to both, to both cities. Okay, so that's, that's the projected uh, length of the trail and the different crossings, and the students you know, figured out what all the different road crossings would be along that trail. What did, what did the colors represent on the crossings? Easy to go left. What's what? Oh, sorry, I, I see that. College Street. No, major, no, major road versus <coughs> minor or creek. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is major road. These are major roads. And then the, the, the yellow is the minor roads. Yeah. So that's the map. We'll come back to that. Uh, and then they took it, they, they prepared an aerial, uh, aerial photo of the uh, Opelika Trailhead. So this is Opelika downtown. You've got Jimmy's and uh, Mafia restaurant. You know, this is where that, that nice uh, parking lot is right next to the railroad track. So this is right in downtown Opelika. Beautiful area, you know, just ready for a trail. <laughs> Lots of parking. Okay, so this would be a, a really convenient place for a trailhead. Right in downtown Opelika. Uh, the one in Auburn. This is the Auburn, Auburn uh, old train depot, nice parking area, you know, uh, right next to downtown, right next to the university. You know, this could potentially be uh, a nice public space. Uh, this is what uh, sections look like for Rails with Trails program. Uh, this is the preferred type of setup where you actually have the, you have an access road, a maintenance road for the, for the rail line next to the, the uh, railway, and then you have trees or another natural barrier, and then you have um, uh, your bike slash pedestrian trail. Um, a less preferable but possible is to have a closer um, physical proximity of the trail with the, rail with the uh, railway, then you probably have a fence in that case. And so these are two possibilities. I mean, you can have entry points for the trail. So this is what a uh, typical path section would look like. Uh, and then this is sort of a schematic of how it could look. So you can either have trees between uh, users and the, the rail line, or you can have fencing. It doesn't have to be a high uh, chain link fence. It can be something attractive, and it can be just foliage. Okay. Uh, and we do have a nice foliage corridor along our rail system here. Uh, so safety and liability okay, is a major issue that uh, is brought up by, especially by the rail companies. Okay. They're concerned about having people right next to the railway, right? Um, so what's interesting is there are some aspects of the trail that actually could reduce liability issues. And one is that railways are always concerned about folks going on the track, right? They're concerned about people using the track corridor. You know, I, around our neighborhood, teenagers go up in there and try to get between neighborhoods, and sometimes people even cross the track. So if you actually put in a trail system, it would it would give people opportunity to use the rail corridor without having to go in the unauthorized areas. So it would create a public space along the railway to prevent unauthorized use on the rails themselves. Um, it also enhances safety, obviously, of people who would be uh, trying to use that corridor. So it would, it would actually, it could even reduce uh, the potential and the incidence of bike accidents and walking accidents in town with cars by having a safe, uh, a safe place for people to go along that corridor. Um, in terms of how past programs have dealt with the safety concerns, uh, there's a setback, obviously, from the rails. Usually it's not right on the rail area. There's often been a fence or a, a barrier. 
and then um, in terms of viability concerns, every state in the country has what's called a recreational use statute. And what that means is that landowners, if they allow people to use their property for recreation uses, they are protected from liability for all accidents. Okay, if somebody comes on your land for hunting or for recreation, you're not liable according to state law if it's a recreational use. So this would protect the railroad from any liability to do with getting hurt somewhere near the track. Also, um, uh, often there's a trail management organization like a Parks and Recreation or like something to do with the city or organization in the town. And so these, would, uh, these organizations would then need to have purchased insurance to cover liability uh, near, the, near the track. And also, um, uh, you can do what's called, and I'm not familiar, I'm really not familiar with this kind of thing very much, but indemnification means that, that the organization in charge of the, uh, of the rails with trails would then agree to pay any liability costs that the railroad might incur. So there are ways to, to handle this sort of thing legally so that railroads don't feel that they're liable for, for accidents that might happen along the way. But what's really wonderful is that this Rails with Trails program that's all over the country has a fantastic track record. There have been very, very few um, incidents, injuries over, in, and that's been 20 years, okay? Think about how many accidents we have of people trying to cross our railroad. And just a, a you know, automobile, a pedestrian, an automobile accident, a bicycle accident. So this is an incredible safety record for the entire country. You know, basically it's been shown to be a, a highly, much, much safer system than many of our current systems where people try to get around uh, using bikes or walking anywhere near cars. So those are safety and liability issues. And then uh, the students put together a list of stakeholders. So these are potential stakeholders that could be involved in the conversation or that would be interested in, in this uh, uh, process. So obviously the city, first of all, planners in the city of Auburn and in Opelika. Uh, there's also the Opelika Main Street organization that might be interested because they have wonderful festivals down there in Opelika and they might, you know, they could interact with the trail and with people coming down the trail to the festival. Uh, there's also an Auburn of like a tourism bureau, bureau and an Auburn and, and the Chamber of Commerce too for both cities could be um, interested. And obviously the railroad. Now CSX um, does have at other places in the country rails with trails along their, tra along their tracks. So they've done this before. So there is experience at the company level with doing the rails with trails. Uh, the students actually went and had some meetings with stakeholders, and I don't know if anybody in this room was involved in any of that, but they met with some of the planners in Auburn about the Rails with Trails. I think they gave them some of this presentation. They met with the city engineer in Opelika, and they also met with um, Shirley Lassenby, who was with the, uh, the Opelika mm -hmm. Bike Advisory Committee. Okay? And what they, they expressed from those meetings was there, was there was interest expressed by all parties. So, all the people they met with were interested. They did express some concerns. Uh, one positive thing is they saw that there could be wonderful connections with parks and other infrastructure in the town. Uh, they, were in, they were interested in and concerned about costs for maintenance and patrolling, obviously. You know, they wanted to know what it would take from the city. Um, and the students actually proposed, because it's a sustainability class, using permeable pavement on the uh, trail. And permeable pavement is a wonderful kind of um, system in which rainwater can go through the pavement instead of washing off of it. So it allows water to percolate in and be filtered and it's less damaging for groundwater and it's less, causes less flooding. So it's a really nice kind of pavement to use, but it does take a certain kind of maintenance and they were a little concerned with that. You don't have to use permeable pavement. They have questions about it. So they did have some meetings already. Uh, and they also listed several other kinds of stakeholders besides the government uh, offices and um, uh, some of the committees. So this committee, they thought might be interested in this. Uh, you saw them at the Bike Lane Club, could be interested. Uh, the food bank, the food bank has, um, and I, frankly, I don't even know exactly where everything is, but there are some food distribution centers along the corridor. And many of the people who try to get the food at the food bank don't have automobiles. And this would actually enhance the accessibility of the food bank for these people. So they might be very interested. Um, our medical center is along the corridor. And they are health oriented and health conscious and they might partner somehow or be interested in the idea of enhancing even the ability of their employees, for example, to get to work without having to drive. Uh, 
Uh, locally owned businesses might be interested. Obviously, uh, obviously the bike shops, right? Um, and some of the local uh, uh, grocery stores along the route, and then you know businesses along the corridor. So all along the corridor, going between Auburn and Opelika, you would think that it would enhance the business of these places to have much more access to the, to the business. And finally, the students surveyed the cyclists. So they came to the Auburn Bike Bash uh, last year. They got responses from about 50 people to a survey that they had. Anybody here recall the survey? Anybody took the survey? So, uh, so they went and asked the bikers to say, what, what do you think about this? They wanted to gain, they wanted to find out how much support there is and how much interest there is, right? So they surveyed people and uh, they found out that most of the people they surveyed are residents of Auburn, so they're not just students, these are long-term residents, which is a good thing in terms of gaining long-term support for this. Uh, many people were sort of in the middle of the years here, so and members of the community, sometimes long-term members of the community. Um, many people they survive, survey, ride with their bikes at least two or three times a week. I know it's hard to see that, this is two or three times a week. Uh, but fairly frequent bicycle riders. Uh, and then they asked if people would ride more if there was more infrastructure, and it was a definite yes. So people are wanting, and people here know that, right, on this meeting in the room, we need more bike, bike infrastructure. People would ride more if we had more. And then they asked if people felt that there, there was a safe uh, trail between the two cities that people use it, and most people said they would use it. And then, uh, if it was along train tracks, would that bother your use? Would that would that bother you? And people said no. Mostly. Okay. So there was pretty positive response. Of course, they're talking to bicyclists, right? This is your average person in Auburn, so they might have had different results if they talked to your average citizen here. But uh, bikers are interested. Okay. Now we get down to the nitty gritty. They did a cost estimate for the trail. And uh, again, I'm not an expert in all these details, but I'll run through it. Um, I guess before I run through everything, I wanted to note that, you know, under $2 million for a, a pretty extensive system linking two cities that would be widely used is really not a fair, a really, really high price. Now. But uh, the, the, fact, the aspect of the cost estimate where uh, this is linear feet, so six miles is about this many feet, and this was an erosion control cost per foot, which is a fairly large cost. So you have, if you're going to build a trail, you have to make sure that you don't have a lot of uh, washing off of soil into waterways. Uh, and then they estimated the cost of various crossing systems. Obviously, there would have to be safe crossing, almost like those uh, the buttons you push to cross the street, right? So you'd have to have something like that to cross, to go across the street, crossing the railroads. So they estimated the cost of all those. Uh, per noble pavement is, pro I think, fairly expensive, so this could come down if it wasn't all permeable. Uh, safety fencing is what they thought would be good for separating, unless we had enough trees to separate. Uh, and then I think this is for where the creek goes across, the, uh, the railroad area. So that would be and then lighting. So they put in a pretty hefty figure for miscellaneous aspects, you know, sort of a buffer figure. Um, so this is the estimate. Crude estimate, but uh, they wanted to get some, a handle on costs just to be able to think about the cost. It's not, it's not a trivial amount of money. Uh, however, there are uh, lots of funding resources. So they actually investigated what other trails and rail, rails with trail systems have used for funding. And there are some NGOs um, around the country uh, that, and you know, local ones that could uh, be. Um, used for trying to raise funds. There are also government organizations. The DOT has funds for this kind of thing. The Federal Highway Administration has, has funds for this kind of thing. Uh, there are also community development block grants. So there are, and probably several other that I don't even know about. So there are quite a few funding sources for these kind of things. Uh, some people who are professionals, like Jeff, might know more about funding. So there are funding resources. And there have to be fundraising drives and, and grant proposals written and things like that. Uh, oh, and land and water conservation. One of the big things that you know, I read that uh, he sent around a fantastic uh, uh, document about successful or tips for, for successful programs, and one is that you have to build a coalition. You've got to build a coalition of broad, uh, many different groups to 
um, to, to really get this kind of thing going. Uh, and one interesting thing is that the name is important. What you name your trail is important because if it's a lackluster or a name that doesn't have good connotations, people aren't gonna get interested. But if you have a catchy name or a historic name, that can really catch people's imagination. And, you, and there are you know, lists of names people have used that are really, I, I don't mind down, but, um, but you know, be thinking about a name. Uh, so at the very end of their presentation, they talk about possibilities for expansion. So if you have this wonderful uh, trail system, you could link to the Kroger Shopping Center, right? If you had a nice, which we don't have, between the trail and the rails and the shopping center yet. You could rent, rent to the, that shopping center that has Panera and all those uh, other uh, Susie's Pizza and all that. Uh, you could link to parks near the trail, uh, other venues, and then you could expand the links so they already had ideas about going further into, into each city, okay? And I wanted to, at the very end here, um, this is the last slide, I wanted to talk about how this fits into the bigger context. And when we teach our students at the university about planning for the future and resilience of cities and planning for resilience, we talk about three different spheres. And the first sphere is the environment, and that's uh, the sphere in which all of our activities take place. Then we have our social systems and our economic systems inside of those. And um, so the students came up with benefits in all these spheres. And one major uh, benefit is that you know vehicles apparently are over 30% of our use of of non-renewable polluting uh, resources. And so it would really, it could potentially reduce, if people can actually get along this corridor using something other than cars, it can reduce the congestion and the fossil fuel use in town. Um, also, it, 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 you get to use something already built for two purposes. So you don't have to build more separate facilities in town. So less, more efficient use of, of resources. Benefits. You know, it, it'd be, it could be actually a, a gathering place for people, and it could be a place where people get together. Uh, there might even be events. I could envision sort of an, an Auburn to Opelika marathon or some or quarter marathon or whatever, something like that. Uh, good for health and fitness. I've mentioned some of these already. A safe recreation. And this is an interesting one. For people that have a hard time getting to stores, this would increase their access. Um, Auburn and Opelika actually have areas that are what we call food deserts, where people, where people's houses are, they're not within walking or e easily accessible distance to a place to buy groceries. Um, and you think about where you live, could you actually walk to a grocery store? Think about it a little bit. But most of us can't. And so this would enhance people's ability to actually get to where they could get a quart of milk without having to jump in a car. Uh, economic benefits, greater consumer access for all the businesses, and we could, it would be, if you use local materials and um, hire local firms, then you're enhancing the economy with the project. And then you would maybe create small bicycle tourism for the area. Okay. Yeah. So thanks for listening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nanette, uh, we've noticed that there's a lot of interest from the runners here. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a local running group, AORA, I think is, the, is their acronym. And I talked to several of their, their leaders and the next day I noticed on the database where we have the online survey, we got about 40 signatures. And I'm curious if your students or, or you had, had you know, anticipated much uh, interaction on that side. Yeah. I'm not a runner. I used to run until so my knees went bad. <laughs> uh, but if I were still a runner, it would be fantastic. I mean, right. runners, you know, think about it. You're a runner. You're always having to deal with um, crossing streets because you still could with this, but fewer streets, right? The rail line has many fewer streets along it, crossing it than most of our streets in the city. So uh, it would be a great place to run. You're surrounded by trees. Right. You know, yeah, I think it would be. And that would be a, a community group to tap into. Is, right. Definitely. Okay. Well, why don't we open it up now for some comments and, and questions? And I think what we'd like to see is w what are some of your initial thoughts? I mean, obviously, it's easy on the front end to say, "Yeah, this sounds great," but it's you know still kind of fuzzy. What would that really mean? What would be the commitment? And ultimately, it comes down to the community. I think making a decision that you know the term you use to form a coalition to bring the right players from both Arbor and Opelika in, the running groups, the other groups. Uh, it just takes a lot of commitment. Uh, what are some of your initial thoughts about that? 
in terms of how you would like to see resources spent, time, effort? You, know, you, you tell us, what do you think? Um, I was thinking as you were doing the presentation um, about raising money to init kind of initiate things instead of going in with zero amount, you know, or I don't even know if that's, that's what it would be, right? I would think, you know, maybe like having a, a century or some sort of big type organization um, with runners and cycles. And then also the participants can sign a petition you know, just like David and I were talking about Flow by Example when it was here, we had a 500 cyclists there. That would have been a great opportunity for people to sign a petition at that time mm -hmm. in one location, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe possibly even, you know, get tips or something, you know, so that when you ask for, um, when you ask for participants, sponsors, or um, shareholders, then you say, well, we have this amount of money to start off with, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like we're not, some kind of fundraiser. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking about this where when you would come to the what are considered major roads, yeah, like we've all been stuck, you know, in traffic at university and railroad track and at Dean and railroad track. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't mentioned here, would there be like I mean, obviously there's a crossing for the cyclist, but right. you might stand here for 10 minutes sometimes. As a, as a cyclist? Because yes. Because we can't, yeah. can't cross the I road. think, I, now again, I'm not an expert on this, but I, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I imagine is, is something just like you have anywhere else in town where you want to cross the street. So I think, do you know more about it? Yeah, we're going to kind of explain on that. Yeah, we're going to say, don't they have that up there? So in common, they had to push a button. Stop it for a minute at right there by, um, by the mall. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could, if the lights aren't timed right, you could have people yeah. that are waiting back up the cross and walk around. Yeah, and yeah. that's probably possible, but you know, that's just what I've seen at, at different trail, trail, trail mm -hmm. trails, trail sites. I've never seen it with the, with the railroad, so I couldn't get tight. I think, Mike, you wanted to make a comment? Yeah, I don't know the name of it, it's that uh, trail in uh, Columbus. The, uh, the river, 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 not the river, 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 the fall water. It's the trace. Yeah, the trace. It's not the mass fall. Anyway, they, like Philip said, they have a few intersections with the push button. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they also have the road painted in uh, hash marks, and the cars have to stop when they see a cyclist approaching. Oh. So basically, the cyclists have the right of way, yeah. and pedestrians also. I think it would sh it would shift uh, the sort of benefits of, of using the area towards the pedestrians and cyclists away a little bit from the cars, and you know people have to slow down a little bit to go across railroads. So there'd be you know there's already a natural place where you kind of slow down a bit. But it you know from my point of view, I think that. The city would benefit from slowing down our roads a little bit and, and benefiting the bicyclists and the pedestrians more getting across. But there are traffic congestion issues. Really but now you take if you take more yeah if you take the more you take more uh, cars off the road, then you're going to reduce. You know I mean it's mm -hmm. a, but but yeah it it would be maybe three or so areas. But I think really the only problem would be at the dean and, and the university because once you head towards yeah. Opelika. Everything would, I mean, when you get to the next major road, it actually, there's a bridge that goes over right. railroad tracks. You know, putting in, when, the, when they have the um, parent, uh, what is it called with the kids and the parents? Yeah, when they have to register. You know, they get the little goodie, uh, goodie bags and stuff, the parents and the kids and everything.